Thank you very much, precious voices. Give God all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Let me welcome you once again to this hour of discovery as we navigate the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Today is the 10th day of the last month of the year 2020. The year appeared to have moved so fast, but we thank God that it has not swept us away. And the Lord who has kept us till now will surely and definitely keep us true to the very end in Jesus' name. We are continuing our series tonight on Parenting 101 as we consider the subject, the characteristics or manifestations of the children of disobedience. You will recall that last week we examined the power behind the children of disobedience. And we did say that the power behind the children of disobedience is a spirit called the spirit, as we can see from the book of Ephesians, chapter number two. And is a prince or a principality called the prince of the power of the air. Is a spirit called the spirit, is a prince called the prince of the power of the air, is the commander of the powers of the unseen world. There is a world that is not seen, that is controlling, that is in charge, that all things originate from to the physical. And this commander of those powers is the power driving the children of disobedience. We went further to say that he operates in two dimensions. He tells us how to live and also propels us in those ways. And how does he tell us to live? He pollutes our mind and our spirit with unbelief. He changes our worldview. And he does it in such a perfect, subtle manner through the things we see and we hear. All our social media information is so much so available at the click of a button. Just carrying your phone, you are carrying 20 translations of the Bible. You are carrying all your notebooks as a student. You are carrying your entire library. You have softwares that are containing so much information. And above all, you have the all-powerful search engine known as Mr. Google that virtually contains anything you might want. So through this means, the enemy has taken advantage and is changing our worldviews on a daily basis through those things that we see and hear, the sight and sound generation. Therefore, what does he do? He programs our destinies through these skills that he uses. And the result is we become disobedient to our parents, biological, spiritual, and even those who have oversight over us. And ultimately, his aim is that we will become disobedient to God. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we'll be examining today the second subhead, which is the characteristics of the children of disobedience. Please go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. We are digging to the root of these matters so that we can be able to effectively pray. And not just to pray, but effectively to be able to parent our children and also those that the Lord will be bringing across our path as mentees, as ones who have authority. Not only just our own direct children, but as many as will be brought under our wings, either in our places of work, in our marketplaces or in our neighborhoods, or our neighbor's children, so that we will be able to have a change of mindset 
regarding these children, that all that is working at them, some is not just they, they are not just trying to be children, but there is a power that is driving them. And when we realize that, we'll be able to confront and tackle those powers from their source so that their grip over our children can be dealt with. Can I have an amen? So what are those characteristics of the children of disobedience? How do they manifest? What are those things? We have seen the power behind them. Is the commander of the powers of the unseen world. What does he push them to do? Hallelujah. What does he push them to do? If you go back to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and the story of Eli and his two priest's sons, his two sons that are priests in their own right, we saw great manifestation of these children. These children were disobedient children. Please go with me very quickly to 1 Samuel chapter number 2. We use that as a background and we come back to the book of Ephesians and we see how the apostle by revelation was able to put these things, these behaviors together in very, very concise way. First Samuel chapter number two. We've read this and we're still looking at it. First Samuel chapter two. Let's read from verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse number 12. Now, the children or the sons of Eli, we are told, were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant will come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh brought up, all that the flesh hook brought up, so they did, so they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Hallelujah. And also before they burn the fat, the priest servant will come and say to the man who sacrificed, give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. Please look at the next verse, verse 16. And if the man said to him, they should really burn the, first, burn the fat first, then you may take as much as your heart desires. He will then answer him, no. But you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. Two things there. We see the workings of the flesh. Hallelujah. There's a craving. It says, give it now. I can't wait. I can't wait for it to be born. Even that was the order. Give it now. And if you don't give it, I will force you. We see an excessive craving of the flesh. You want something and you want it now. You want it desperately. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So we see a strong craving. This is no longer ordinary. It's being propelled by a force. If you don't give it, I will force it. I will take it by force. In the house of God. So we see an excessive craving for the flesh. Therefore, the sin of the young man was great, very great, before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see a strong craving of the flesh. Please take note of that. And then we also see something we see a verbal tone that we'll come back to as we examine their characteristics. There is a way they have with words. There is a way their mouth controls them that the sin of the mouth becomes prevalent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
So please, let's take note of that. So let's come back to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 2. We'll read from verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the children of disobedience. That's the power that drives them. The prince of the power of the air. That principality known as the commander of the powers of the unseen world. Verse number three. Among who also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Hallelujah. So the Bible is talking about that these children of disobedience, they are driven by a particular force. We have seen the force and the power that drives them. But how then do they manifest? What are their characteristics? It's what verse 3 begins to tell us. It says, they were first dead in trespasses and sins, in which we also once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Please give it to me in the book of the message. Let's look at that verse in the message. Looking at these scriptures, navigating from Ephesians to chapter 5, and also looking at Colossians, and we'll come back to begin to see the thread that is running through all of them. The message. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing. When we felt like doing it, what we feel like doing, when we feel like doing it. All of us in the same boat, the children of disobedience. When you feel like doing something, you have a craving, and it doesn't matter. Whenever it is you feel like it, you just want to go for it. There is an excessive, there's a drive, and nothing is going to stop you. I wish it were for godly things. Look at the way the servants of Phinehas and his brother Hophni behaved. They says, look, we need it now. If you don't give it to us, we'll take it by force. What they felt like having whenever they feel like having it. Say, we can't wait for it to be boiled. Let's boil it. That's the order. Or let's burn it. Let's burn the fat out. And then you can take as much as you want. Says, oh no, we want it this way, raw, and now. Hallelujah. What they felt like doing when they felt like doing it. Hallelujah. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of you. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So what we see is a kind of drive, an excessive drive. <laughs> glory to God. Let's take this down, number one. The characteristics of the children of disobedience. Number one, they are dead in trespasses and their sins. In other words, sinning has become a way of life. Dead in trespasses and sins. Living in sin. Sinning has become a way of life. Please, pardon me. Have you seen some folks who they cannot make a complete statement without lying. Look, when you ask them, where are you coming from? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just coming from Maitama. The man is coming from Lugbe. Oh, he says, I'm coming from Maitama. Ah, but I thought I saw you in Lugbe. Oh, no, I went from Lugbe to Maitama. Then from Maitama, I came. 
So where are you coming from? The man is coming from Lugbe. Maybe the vehicle he boarded took the express and then passed through Maitama and then came to Baga. He says he's coming from Maitama, not Lugbe. Can I have an amen? What I'm saying is, have you not seen some folks? They can't make two statements without injecting lies. Nobody is holding them, but you know what? It has become part and parcel of them. They just can't do without lying. Dead in trespasses and sins. Sinning has become a way of life. It has become their way of life. Dead in trespasses and sins. They now live perpetually in sin. That's the way the children of disobedience behave. What was that I saw you with? Oh, can I check that? In telling you, he does not know when he's already lying. He's either wanting to make himself feel good, or he wants to give himself a higher sense of importance. He wants you to know that, yes, we have arrived. We are the ones there. The guy can't just live a normal life anymore. His normal life is a life of sin. They just want to make, you know, they want to just puff themselves up. Hallelujah. They just must find a way of boosting their ego. They want to tell you that we are bigger than what you are seeing. Who is asking you? Children of disobedience. They like, they are dead in trespasses and sins. Normality is a life of sin. When they are talking of normality, if they have not lied, if they have not done something to puff off themselves, they are not normal. They want their ego to be massaged. That has become a way of life. Children of disobedience. Number two. They conduct themselves in the lust of their flesh. In the lust of their flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Hallelujah. We read it in the message, doing what we felt like doing when we feel like doing it. So when children want to do what they like to do, when they want to do it, they begin to show lack of accountability. They are no longer accountable. A child wakes up in the morning, there are chores for him or her to do, and what, what happens? Say, oh, mommy, I'll do it when, I, when, I, when I'm ready. You begin to watch it. You better begin to watch it when they can no longer take simple instructions from their parents, but want to do what they feel like doing whenever they want to, Daddy, uh, Mommy, can't you see that? Look, I'm, 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 whatever it is they are doing. They are not ready on your own terms. They want to do it on their own terms. What they feel like, when they feel like. Please begin to watch it. Many of the traits that we see in our children today, if you are patient and observant enough, you will see that it's been there from when they were toddlers. And that's why as parents, we must shine our eyes. Things don't just go wrong. When we see these children from their youth, let's begin to monitor them. If we see traits in them that are against or not godly, let's begin to cut them off. When a child does not hear a word, only wants to do what he or she likes when they feel like, those are the traits, the characteristics of children of disobedience. A child must be accountable. A child must be obedient. A child must be ready to hear a word. But if they will hear a word on their own terms, it's whenever they feel like, and whatever it is they feel like doing, at whatever time, friends, let's take note. These are the signs. 
that is beyond just a child saying, you're tired, I will do it in a short while. There is something that is beginning to drive those children. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The lust of our flesh and the desires of our flesh and of the mind. Excessive craving. Lust means excessive craving. When you crave excessively for something. Self. What you feel like. When you feel like. Please go with me to the book of James. James chapter 3. Read quickly from verse 13 to 16. We're looking at the characteristics of the children of disobedience. What's their characteristics? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. But it's earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, please take note of that word. The operative word I'm highlighting here is self-seeking. Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Hallelujah. Self-seeking. It's what you feel like doing whenever they feel like that is self-seeking. It's no longer ordinary. The Bible here says it is driven by something that is earthly, an earthly wisdom. And I wish it would just stop there. It's a sensual wisdom. I wish it could just stop there. But it says it's a demonic wisdom. Can I have an Amen. When you are required to do stuff, that's when you should do it. Not when you feel like. And not when you feel like. Not what you feel like doing. And not when you feel like it. When you are operating in such a self-seeking manner, the Bible says the wisdom that is operating is not just earthly. The wisdom is not just sensual, but it's a demonic kind of wisdom. The power is the prince of the power of the air. Self-seeking. All you just want is about yourself. When you begin to see those traits of selfishness, selfishness, everything is about self. It's what they feel like doing. When they feel like it, please watch out. It's no longer just selfishness like that. It's a self-seeking spirit. It's inspired and driven by a demonic force, a demonic wisdom. It's the prince of the power of the air the commander of the powers of the unseen world that is behind it. Can I have an amen? amen? Glory to God. It's important. They look simple, self-seeking. But please, let's watch out. That is how it starts. They just want to do what they feel like when they feel like. And we think, oh, it's all right. Oh, it's all right. You know, it's a child. Amade Oh, no. <laughs> it's not Amade, you will know. When they grow up in such a manner, in such an environment, we've talked about the evil conspiracy of parents. When you pamper them, when you are supposed to bring out the rod and say, hey, listen, who is the father here? Who is the mother here? I am your parents. Then you drive out that demonic wisdom out of their lives before it grows into a huge tree that are no longer controllable. It starts with them wanting what they feel like when they want it. Little, little things. So that you told, I was say, talking about it the other day and you were laughing. I said, when they manifest such, it's a backhand. When you give the child a backhand, he knows, eh, <laughs> this one is not here. Glory to God. You can call it child abuse, whatever you like, you call it. The Bible says, fully rest in the bosom of a child and it's the rod of correction that we drive it out. When they begin with such innocent things as little, little disobedience and we don't drive it away from them, 
then it grows. And then the enemy comes in to take advantage of them and he assigns a demon to just begin to fan that flame until they go out of hand. But I trust God that any of our children that have been driven by the prince of the power of the air we have the, the grip of this Satan, satanic wisdom broken upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three. Manifestation or characteristics of the children of disobedience. They walk according to the course of this world. They walk according to the course of this world. Hmm. Hallelujah. The Bible says they walk according to the course of this world. Everyone that is not born again is walking according to the course of this world. Which we all walk. We are all in that same boat. When we give our lives to Jesus and we submit the lordship of our Lord to Jesus Christ, then he redeems us and we pledge a new allegiance. We pledge a new allegiance. What does it mean to walk according to the course of this world? It means wanting our own way, wanting everything for yourself and wanting to appear important. Please go with me to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John 2. We're looking at the characteristics of these children of disobedience. 1 John chapter 2. We'll read from verses 15 and 16. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Please give us straight. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, we just read that in Ephesians 2, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. This is what the world has to offer. When we are walking according to the course of this world, we are being controlled, our life is being ruled by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Let's read in the New Living Translation. Do not love this world, nor the things it has to offer. For when you love the world, you do not love, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Two pastors cannot captain a ship. If the love of God is in your life, is in your heart, then you cannot love the world. Hallelujah. You can't love the world and love the Father at the same time. It can happen. Verse 16. For the world offers only, and please take note, the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure and a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but they are from this world. Look at that. They are from this world. A craving only. The world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything that we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. The operative word there is craving. Craving for physical pleasure, craving for everything we see pride in our achievements and possessions. Hallelujah. Message, verses 15 and 16. These are the manifestations of the prince of the power of the air when he begins to rule in the lives of our children. In our lives as children to our parents. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. 
The love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. Don't love the world's ways, not the world's goods. Is he saying that the good things are not good? Good things are good, but you don't love them. They don't take over you. They have not become an idol in your heart. Those things are for your use. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The operative word there is seek first. The world only has to offer. These things are nothing more. Whereas if you love the Father, you will not only be in his good books, but all these other things that are nice and good will be added. That's why I said take note of that word only. The world only has to offer these physical things. Matthew 6, 33, love not the world. Give us Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First and its righteousness. And all these things will be added. What are those things that will be added? Clothes, shoes, houses. Everything that you desire. Seek first the kingdom. That's what First John is trying to say. When you love the Father, he owns all these things. They are his. They will be added. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Give us verse 32. What are those things? What are they? What are the good things? Hallelujah. 31. After all these things, the Gentiles seek, don't worry, say what we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we shall wear, eat, drink, wear, sleep, eat, drink, wear, eat, drink, wear. That is what the children of disobedience are after. That is what the world has got to offer. But life is much more than that. Life is much more than that. What is the purpose of eating? What is the purpose of drinking? What is the purpose of wearing? If it's just for us to eat, drink, and to wear, and there is no purpose to them, then we will have wasted our lives and our destinies. Hallelujah. God must be glorified in all things that we do. The world only has to offer the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Glory to God. We are reading message. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Of the message. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world. Squeezes out love for the father. Verse 16. Practically everything that goes on in the world. What is it? Can we chorus it together? What is it that goes on in the world? Number two. And number three. Hallelujah. Can we go again? Number one. Everything that goes on in the world is one, wanting your own way. Two, wanting everything for yourself. And number three, wanting to appear important. It has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from him. You want your own way. No, your life is no longer yours. You want everything for yourself. Then what will be left for others? You want to appear important. Hey, which important? The Bible says, he that exalts himself shall be done what? Shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. It's not for you to appear important. Important before who? Let God exalt you. And not to exalt yourself. Be yourself. Be decent. Do the things you have to do. Have a healthy self-esteem. Hallelujah. But don't try to make yourself wanting to appear important. Don't try to. Let God exalt you. That's what the word of God says. When you humble yourself, the Lord your God, we exalt you. But the world always wants to appear important in a place. Wants everything for himself. 
wants all the honor, all the accolades to be put on him only. As if he's the doer of all things. Apostle Paul settled that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. It says, by the grace of God I am what I am. Yet not I, but it's the grace of God. Give us 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. It's the grace of God that works in us. Whatever it is you are, you must recognize is by the grace of God. Don't try to make yourself important. Don't try to elevate yourself. Don't try to. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I. Even the laboring. Say, well, it's by dint of hard work. Thank God for the hard work. Who gave you the strength to work hard? That's what the apostle is saying. So you must keep that. Yes, there is a manward path to which you must do. But who is the one supplying the grace? Even if you want to work hard, what if you are not physically healthy? How will you work hard? Say, my, my hands, this my hands have wrought this for me. Who gave you the strength? So who makes you better, if not God? You can want to do, what if the strength is not there? Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For who is the one that is at work in us? Both to do and to will of his own good pleasures. Even if you want to do, what if he does not supply the grace? What if the physical strength is not there? It is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. But friends, watch out. Don't try to make yourself feel important. Don't try to. Humble yourself. Let God elevate you. You enter a place, you don't need to make noise and start bragging. And they, don't they know I've arrived? Who are you? Who are you? Hallelujah. Why have you ever wondered, why did Jesus have to be introduced to the Pharisees who arrested him? What did Judas say? Why did they go and bribe Judas to betray him? How did he betray him? He said, whoever I do what? I kiss. Okay, why did you think so? They all look alike. Okay? Maybe. Huh? He humbled himself. Because you couldn't tell the difference between Peter and Jesus. Between Thomas, a doubter, and Jesus. Glory to God. There was no high philatry. He was not wearing a bishop's cassock that would differentiate him from the rest. He was just ordinary. He was just like any other person. They, wouldn't, they may not have resembled the same physically, but you know what? It was just not different. Hallelujah. That is just talking about the equality. He did not elevate himself. He was not bragging that, yes, when he's going, all other people have to go 10 miles behind. You know, there are some people you can't move near them. Glory to God. When the big man is going, he has to be going in front. No wonder when the fire of the enemy comes, he hits him directly. Nobody to shield him from it. Hallelujah. But you couldn't differentiate. Hallelujah. Wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, and wanting to appear important. They walk according to the course of this world. Is it that God is not interested in giving you good things? He does. He wants to. All is at your beck and call. The Bible says in the presence of God there is what? Fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are what? Pleasures forevermore. What pleasure do you want that is not available in God? What pleasure do you want? There is, there is none. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number four or five. Number four. The sins, they walk according to the sins of the flesh. 
I'm going to crisscross some scriptures here for you. The sins of the flesh. This characterizes the children of disobedience. The sins of the flesh. We broached it when we talk about the lust of our flesh. The sins of the flesh. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, let's read from verses 1 to 3. The sins of the flesh. This characterizes children of disobedience. The lust of the flesh. Let's amplify it a little bit. And these last two points are so critical, I want you to please take note. The sins of the flesh. Ephesians chapter 5, let's read from verse 1 to 3. Therefore be imitators of God as their children. And walk in love, as Christ also loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Glory to God. Let it not be named among you as is fitting for saints. Verse number three. Ne neither filthiness. Hallelujah. Please, my apologies. Okay, as is fitting for saints. Hallelujah. Give it to us in the message. Watch. What God does, then you do it. Like children, you learn proper behavior from their parents. Can I have an amen? Can I have a big amen? Watch what God does, then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. That's the first point of contact. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. Children have the ability they have the innate capability to learn from parents. So what they see us doing is what they will grow up having the tendency to so do. Mostly, what God does is to love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Is that the way you love? Do you love to give or you love to get? Can I have an amen? God loved us. He says we should imitate him. How are we to? He loved to give. He loved us and he gave himself to us. Say we should love like that. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Don't allow love to turn into lust. Setting off a downhill slide into sexual promiscuity, filthy practices, or bullying greed. Look at that. Bullying greed, filthy practices, sexual promiscuity. These are sins of the flesh. Jump to verse number five. Number five, verse five. That no fornicator, the New King James says, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Look at that. The sins of the flesh. It says they have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and in God. Idolaters, it says fornicators, unclean persons, or covetous men. People that are greedy, covetous, sexual promiscuity, filthy practices. Hallelujah. The message says you can be sure using people or religion or things just for what you can get out of them. The usual variations of idolatry will get you nowhere. And certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. Please take note of this. Number, this is verse 5. Fornicators Covetous people and those who practice uncleanness. I love the way the message describes them. 
since they are people users. Hallelujah. They use people or use religion or use things just to get what they want. Glory to God. So children of disobedience, what do they do? They either use people, use God, or use things to get what they want. That's what we are reading here. You can be sure that using people or religion or things, that's the message of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Using people, using God, or using things just to get what they want. These are variations of idolatry. This is tough. Can I have an amen? And we have people, all they use is they use God. Not because they love him, not because they obey his commandments, but it's convenient for them to use him to get what they want to satisfy their flesh. Or they use people. Or they use things. When you see such people, take notes. They are children of disobedience. They are not fit for the kingdom. They should know that the kingdom is not theirs. That's what the Bible is saying. They are children of disobedience. They may have grown up to become adults and parents. But you know what? The Bible called them children of disobedience. They use people, use religion, or use things to get what they want. And we have many in the world today that are like that. There are people who use us. They use people and they use and dump. They use and dump. They use God. They use religion and dump. And they use things just to meet and satisfy their own evil lust. The Bible says the usual variations of idolatry to get you nowhere, certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. Let's stop using people. Let's stop using God. And let's stop using things. Children of disobedience. Hallelujah. Let's put ourselves in the mirror and begin to look at ourselves. Are we people users? Do we use God to achieve our aim, our selfish aim? Or we use things? We can use anything and anybody available. Use the pastor, use the congregation, use God's people. Ride on them to where you want to get to. The Bible says they are children of disobedience. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 to 7. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You see those three there, exactly. Fornication, uncleanness, covetousness. Sins of the flesh. The Bible calls it their idolatry. Idolatry, covetousness, greediness. You just want to use things. You want to use people. You want to use God. Evil passions. Evil desires. When these things are operating, remember they are the characteristics of the children of disobedience. And the power driving it is the principality called the commander of the powers of the unseen world. You are already under the grip of the devil. You may be in church. You may be a church man, a church woman, a church boy, a church girl. For friends, there's a power that is driving you. And if you are one that uses men, you use God, you use religion, you use things to achieve your aim, there's a power that is driving you. It's called the prince of the power of the air. And I pray that this grip will be destroyed and broken over your life. In the name of Jesus. Every greediness has its source in the prince of the power of the air. You're so greedy, you just want to use things. You can use God, you can use anybody, you can use whoever to achieve your aim. It's called covetousness, greediness, bullying greed. We are ready to bully anybody and even bully God in the process. God is not mocked. Can I have an amen? amen. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Amen. Please give it to us in the message. The message from verse 5 to 7 again. And that means killing off everything connected with the way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, impurity, lust. Look at the next phrase. Doing whatever you feel like 
whenever you feel like it. And grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. A life that is shaped by feelings and things. The things they see, the things they hear, the things they see other people doing. God is not the one shaping their lives anymore. You see that same phrase that we saw in Ephesians? Glory to God. Doing whatever they feel like, whenever they feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts their fancy. That's a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. We are talking of the sins of the flesh. Can I have an amen? May the Lord deliver us from this evil spirit. I said, may the Lord deliver us from this evil spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So how are we to regulate ourselves instead of the sins of the flesh? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go straight to verse 7. Not by things that we see, or, you know, just grabbing everything to ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Let's take it from the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief. Respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy favor. Thus we walk, not by sight or appearance. For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Hallelujah. How do you regulate your life? Are you regulating your life by God's standard? Not judging by the sight of the eyes or the hearing of the ear, but living in the fear of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11, verse number 3. Is that the way we live our lives? Or we are being moved, we are being tutored, we are being lectured, we are being trained. We are living our lives by the standard of the world. The sins of the flesh. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 11, verse number 5, the New Living Translation, He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. Do we wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment? Do we make up our minds to live by nothing but the truth? Or we engage in lies and all of that? Hallelujah. The last characteristic that we're looking at tonight is the sins of the mouth. And these two, they go together, the sins of the flesh and the sins of the mouth. That's the summary. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5. And then we'll go into prayers. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, we read verse number 3. Take it from verse 3. So that you see it's the same flow. Ephesians 5 verse number 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as is fitting for saints. Look at verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. So these sins of the flesh and the sins of the mouth are the two major characteristics of the children of disobedience. The sins of the mouth. Seen the sins of the flesh, the sins of the mouth. And we saw it when we read 1 Samuel chapter 2. The sins of the flesh, the servants of Ophni and Phineas. It was they, they were driven by the flesh. And then look at the coarseness of their words. We will take it by force. If you don't give us, we will take it by force. And those are the two major things we could see from their lives. And they manifest in various and several ways. But these two are major. The sins of the flesh and then the sins of the mouth. Let's read the message of Ephesians 5.4. The message. We see the same thread going through. We've seen it in Ephesians 2, now Ephesians 5. Though some tongues don't allow love, verse 4. Though some tongues just love the taste of gossip. I love the way the message puts it. 
They love the taste of gossip. Christians have better uses for language than that. Can I have an amen? Have a better use for language than using it for gossip. Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fit our style. Thanksgiving is our dialect. Hallelujah. Is Thanksgiving your dialect? Is that your dialect? Always thanking God, irrespective of what the situation will be. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We have life. We know we have hope. We may not be there, but we know we are on the way. It says we have better use for our language. Thanksgiving is our dialect. We shouldn't talk silly. Better use for language than that. We shouldn't love the taste of gossip. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Let's read 6 and 7 in the same message. Don't let yourselves get taken by religious smooth talk. God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk but want nothing to do with him. Don't even hang around people like that. We are reading the message of verses 6 and 7 of Ephesians chapter 5. It says, don't let yourselves get taken in by religious smooth talk. And get, God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk, but want nothing to do with him. All they do is talk. His mouth. His mouth. They can sell you with their mouth. But there is no action backing it up. None. It says, God gets furious with such. Hallelujah. Please go with me to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Let's jump to verse 8. But message. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper. Irritability. Meanness. Profanity. Dirty talk. See that? Dirty talk. Verse 9. Don't lie to one another. You've done that You've done with that old life. You are done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes and you've stripped off and put on and put in the fire. Can I have an amen? amen? Now you are dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. Say designer. Say designer. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Can I have an amen? amen? All those lying, let it be. Look, you've consumed the fire of God. Burn them! Your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on you. You're enjoying a new life. You're a designer before God. He has designed you unique and special. Can I have an amen? amen. The old fashions, all the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish, non-Jewish, religious, irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ and everyone is included in Christ. Shout hallelujah. The sins of the mouth, they go together. The sins of the flesh and the sins of the mouth. And God wants us to avoid them. These are the characteristics of the children of disobedience. If you are still having challenges with your mouth, you still find it easy to lie at times. And then the sins of the flesh, greediness, unfilthy practices, sexual promiscuity. Friends, it's time to cry out to God and say, Lord, let this power, this principality, this commander of the powers of the unseen world that is laying grip on my life, leave me alone in the name of Jesus. Job, Job 31 verse 30. Indeed, Job 31 verse 30, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for a curse on his soul. The sins of the mouth is dangerous. Hallelujah. Psalm 39 verse number 1. Psalm 39 1, New King James Version. We're going to pray tonight and trust in God at the grip of the power of this principality will be this Psalm 39 verse 1. Give me Psalm 39 verse 1. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Psalm 39 verse number 1. 
I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my mouth, my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. Can I have an amen? Not only before the wicked, to restrain your mouth, even before the saints. Guard your ways, lest you sin with your tongue. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 6. Ecclesiastes 5, 6. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. See, they go together. Your mouth and your flesh. The sins of the mouth and the sins of the flesh. Don't let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the works of your hands? One great measure. Take this lastly. One great measure of your spirituality is your ability to guard against the sins of the mouth. That is one great measure of your spirituality. Let's close with this. James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. James 1, 26. Give it to me in the New Living Translation. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your mouth, you are fooling yourself. And your religion is worthless. Can I have an amen? Can I have a big amen? amen. Give us verse 26 back. If you claim to be religious, but you cannot control your tongue, you are what? Fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. In other words, if you are just a man that talks smooth religious talk without actions, is worthless. Verse 27. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress, refusing to let the world corrupt you. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. We are going to pray these two prayers. Lord, help me. Don't allow my mouth to drive me to sin before you. These are the two major characteristics of the children of disobedience. The sins of the mouth and the sins of the flesh. It's their hallmark. It's their trace, trust talking trade. Help me, Lord. Do not allow my mouth to cause me to sin. Do not allow my mouth to cause my flesh to sin. Help me, Lord. Break the grip of this power of the commander of the powers of the unseen world over my life in the name of Jesus. Break his grip over the lives of our children in the name of Jesus. Break his grip over my own life as your child, as a child of God in the name of Jesus. Break his grip over my life, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and speak to God. In the name of Jesus. Sempra ko shekato riyama zegata. Mengula raba zegato tapra ko shekato. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Let the yoke, let the yoke be broken upon our lives. The commander of the powers of the unseen world. In the name of Jesus. Zenda rabo shekata. Karibo zembaraka zegata. Mezando roba se praka jegata, mezanda rababa zegato, o maribo sivaria pa kazento, ke la riba zambra copa zeta, ngelerie ma zambra capa zeta, ngelerima ma zambra cosecata. Father, do not let our mouth cause our flesh to sin. In the name of Jesus, don't let our mouth cause our flesh to sin, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I say and I proclaim with Brother Job. I will not allow my mouth to sin. In the name of Jesus, help me to restrain my mouth. Help me to restrain my mouth. In the name of Jesus. Me zambaro pa zegata. Me kalaraba zegata to praka zegata. Me zandari mazata. Ka ribo seva raka zegata. Kalarapa zampra ko pa shekato. Ngeleriema ma zampra ko pa zegata. To apapa koze. Ke laria mama sekata. Help us to walk by faith. Help us to regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to respect our relationship with you. Help us to rule our lives by the standard of heaven, by your standard, Lord, and not according to the dictates of the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Rekapasikataya. Mezandarabo sevaria mama. Meka zapropa zegata, kalaraba zemboroba zengata, engeleria baba zamprakopa zenderia baba, rababa zegato topa rababa zegata rababa zegata, 
reke posu paraba shekataria. Oh, ma sembra po shekata, ke la rima zampropa pazeta. Oh, ma zemba rabo shekatato, ngeleria ma ma sampra ko pazeta, me zantato pra ko pazeta, reke posu paraba shekataria. Oh, ma zampra ka shekataria. Help us, Lord. Help us not to allow our mouth to cause our flesh to sin. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Let the power of the commander of the powers of the unseen world, let his grip be destroyed upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh, ma sepraka sikata. Zenderia bazapraka baba zikata. Mezandara baba zikata. Oh, ma ropa sempra kopa zeta. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. We submit ourselves before you tonight. We humble ourselves before you. Have your way in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We'll continue from there next week. By the grace of God, as the Lord helps us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you at the top.